Hi! In this video, we will solve a practical example to illustrate the initial measurement of a group of insurance contracts using the general model. So, first we will solve the example when the group of insurance contracts is not onerous, so assumed to be profitable. And then we will take a look at the example when the group of insurance contracts is onerous, loss-making right at the initial measurement and recognition. So, let's take a look at the first example. AB Insurer, the insurance company, issues 200 insurance contracts with a coverage period of four years starting at the issuance date and the following information is available. The insurance premium is 15 currency units per contract for the whole coverage period, payable within one month after its issuance. The annual future cash outflows are estimated at three currency units per contract and the discount rate is 5%. Estimated risk adjustment for non-financial risk upon initial recognition is 200 currency units. By the way, we will cover all of these components in our future videos. For now, let's assume we just have them. How to measure the group of insurance contracts initially in line with IFRS 17? And we will assume that no contracts will lapse within the coverage period, so all of them will be completed. Before we start solving the case, let's revise. In the previous lesson, we learned that initially we measured the insurance contracts at the sum of fulfillment cash flows and contractual service margin. And the first two components of the fulfillment cash flows are estimated future cash inflows and estimated future cash outflows from the group of insurance contracts. So let's set them up in a table. I pre-made one for you here. The first column is for years, since the question says that the coverage period is four years and that is the life of the contract. We also have zero here because it represents now. Then we have cash inflows. The question says that AB insurer receives the premium of 15 currency units up front. So we have 200 contracts here. So the total premium would be 3000 currency units. And remember, we have just issued contracts, not received any premium yet. So this is the future estimate. Now, cash outflows. The question says that the company assumes the cash outflows of three currency units per year. So we can input three times 200 to each year of one to four. And we can reasonably assume for the purpose of this calculation that all the cash flows happen at the year end. Again, what exactly enters into these cash outflows? Basically claims paid and servicing costs and other items too. Then we can calculate the net future cash outflows as the sum of cash in and cash out. Fine. The next component of the fulfillment cash flows is discounting because we need to bring them down to present value. So our discount rate is 5%. We need to calculate the discount factor for this rate for each year using this formula. Once we're done, we just multiply the discount factor with the net cash flows and we get the discounted cash flows. Sum it all up and you get the present value of future expected cash outflows and inflows from the group of insurance contracts. But this is before the last component, which is risk adjustment for non-financial risk. Again, this is given in this example and we will focus on it in some of the next lectures. Here, we simply deduct 200 currency units as given by the question. And only then we can get the fulfillment cash flows with all of their components. And you can see that those come to 672 currency units, which is positive, greater than zero. So it tells us that the contracts are not loss making and that they are not onerous. And in this case, we have one more component to add, which is the contractual service margin. And that represents exactly the unearned profit from the group of insurance contracts. We cannot recognize this profit immediately in profit or loss. That's the main principle. So what do we do? 
we just calculate CSM or contractual service margin as the negative value of the fulfillment cash flows. And in this case, it comes to minus 672. As a result, immediately after issuance at initial recognition, the group of contracts is measured at zero and no journal entry is passed. Then the example continues. AB insurer receives insurance premiums from the group of insurance contracts immediately after the initial recognition. No other changes in estimates of future cash flows occur. So how does the measurement of insurance contracts change? Okay, let me just copy the same table as we prepared above. Everything stays the same since the only change is the receipt of insurance premiums. And we only need to adjust for that change in this table because now our expected future cash inflows became zero. We do not expect any receipts in the future. So as a result, our fulfillment cash flows immediately after initial recognition are minus 2,328. They are negative, but it does not mean that the contracts became onerous, not at all. We are not at initial recognition, but immediately after it. Then we deduct the CSM as calculated above at initial recognition. So minus 672. And now the total comes to minus 3000. And this becomes our liability from the insurance contract. And so the journal entry for the receipt of the insurance premiums is to debit cash or bank accounts with the amounts received and credit insurance contract liability. Fine. That was the initial measurement for the contracts that are not onerous. Now, let's twist the example a bit. This is exactly the same example as before, with one difference here. The annual future cash flows are 5 currency units per contract, not 3 as before. And this will change our fulfillment cash flows table, so let's see how. Everything stays the same. We just change the cash outflows to 1000 per year, which is 5 times 200 contracts. I left a discounting formula and everything here as before. And so, as you can see, present value of fulfillment cash flows before risk adjustment is minus 546. Then you deduct the risk adjustment of 200 and we get the present value of fulfillment cash flows at minus 746. And what does that mean? Here, the fulfillment cash flows are negative, not positive as in the example before. So our group of insurance contracts is onerous, loss making. And the main principle of the general model is that we shall recognize that loss immediately in profit or loss. So we will not keep it in the balance sheet as negative contractual service margin. But the contractual service margin becomes zero. And therefore, initial measurement of the group of insurance contracts is minus 746, not zero as before. And our journal entry is therefore debit profit or loss, insurance service expenses with 746, and credit insurance contracts liability with the same amount. Then what happens when the insurer gets cash flows from premiums right after initial recognition? Exactly as before, we need to take that into account in our table. So we just delete the cash inflows since the insurer has received them. And as you can see, the fulfillment cash flows become minus 3746. And we need to pass exactly the same journal entry as in the previous example. So to debit cash and bank accounts with the amounts received and credit insurance contract liability. And so ending balance of the insurance contract liability will therefore be minus 3,746, as you can see here. This is the end of this video. Thanks for watching.